Green has just gone back in the air. Rick Trickle leads Joe Rutman as we start the second leg, the second 99 laps, 99 miles to decide the championship here in the Truck, truck Challenge. And once again, Rutman, as he came off turn two, pushed up the racetrack, not, a, not able to make that run, but he's on the inside now and making a run for the lead. Rutman by on the inside, puts a Ford out front for the first time today. Meanwhile, Sprague moves up to attack the left rear of Bickle, and he's into second spot. Bickle, who led the last 15 laps of the first leg, quickly goes back to third. Well, a big shuffle of positions in the first couple of laps after the halftime break. Obviously, Rutman's bunch did good work down there with Roush racing. And Sprague, well, said he might take it easy and save the tires. So much for that theory. Well, he might take it easy. He may be running easier than he was the first half of the race. And Joe Rutman, the real key is what's going to happen in a few laps. He was able to run for four or five laps before, but after that, his truck started drifting back. We'll see what happens. Mike Bliss on the inside of Kenny Hendrick. And there's the three of Jay Sauter. Hendrick is a lap down as Bliss moves under him. He doesn't want to let that black three. The truck that won the inaugural championship for Skinner get away. Sprague is around Rutman to take over the lead. Now we'll see who's going to take Here comes Dave Resendez, the seven truck. and driver Bliss about who hit whom, who made the contact. And there we see Bliss driving away in the team ASC. Yeah, that man is it. Back to the left side, the left quarter panel pushed up pretty good. The spoiler's pushed all the way up. Is Eddie Threpp telling Barry Dotson what kind of problem he has? Mike thought it was his old open-wheel rival, Kenny Irwin Jr., that made the contact. Dodson said, if I understood it correctly, the free truck. That's what I thought they said. Let's see if we can tell exactly what might have happened. There we see Kenny Irwin on the inside of Bliss. And yes, it is, in fact, the three truck that goes up the racetrack, Jay Sauter, and gets in the left rear of Mike Bliss. And pretty good contact. These replays are in slow motion, so you're not able to see the force that these trucks hit the wall as you would if they would speed the film up to take it. Easy to see there why he might have thought that it was Irvin. Irvin was up alongside him, and uh, of course they raced wheel to wheel in the open wheel ranks for years back chasing the USAC championships. There's some uh, discussion between these two drivers as to which goes in front of the other. <laughs> and they're going to have to let NASCAR solve that one. Those drivers being number 94, Ron Barfield at the Ford, and number three, Jay Sauter in the Chevy. In this bed, so that Ford prevails. and that's the battle as they head for turn three. Hornaday trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. Sprague trying to put him a lap down. Rump is back there. Taking a look at the truck. Is that good? And Hornaday still, the truck is loose. Came off turn four. Back in with him and Sprague with him. And Hornaday moved down the block then, but the back end is pretty happy on that 16 truck. And look at Rutman. I'll tell you what, Hornaday's doing everything he can to keep those boys behind him. Now Sprague gets down along the inside. Nope, nothing there yet. Sprague, the race leader. You heard Jack say at the break that he would try to conserve the tires in the second half, and that cost him the lead. All of his race wins last year on the big tracks. He is challenging for today. Wow. He just said, move over, Ron. I am coming through. But Hornaday's going to try to come back, a la Earnhardt. Not there this time. Rutman sitting back there looking this over, contemplating his own strategy. Don't contemplate too hard, Joe, because Bickle will be there to make up your mind for you. Bickle is third. A 
Let's finish the Michael Waltrip story as we go to Bill Weber. And first of all, you're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. I uh, certainly feel like I've hit something pretty hard, and, and looking at the truck, that's the case, but uh, we'll be okay. Any idea what happened? I know exactly what happened. It was dumb on my part. Uh, when I spun out, it flat spotted a tire, and I felt it shaking. I should have hit it, and I didn't, which was stupid, but... Uh, not knowing the rules i didn't know how many laps they put me behind or whatever for changing tires and i stayed out and uh probably cost us about 50 grand but uh learned a valuable lesson as they say okay leroy your boy's okay michael walter crashing out of the race consider that ron hornaday had exactly the same problem did elect to stay out but look at bickle the leader at the halfway is dropping back butch miller the 20 truck just has gone by and moved into the fifth spot Put Bickle back to about fifth or sixth. Bickle said the truck was tight, but that they were going to leave it that way. And apparently that was not the correct decision. Hornaday, determined to get that lap back, continues to harass the race leader, Sprague. Rutman looking on. Resendi's coming on. Hey, Resendi was, I believe, seventh at the break. He's moved to... get that lap back boy he was so frustrated to have to sit back there and watch those positions go by follow lap down that is a pass for 10th spot as Corelli is on the move Corelli moving inside the top 10 the high flames drifter in the chest round four and then she chuck bound there we see the battle for well that's not a battle for anything because Hornaday now is falling back Sprague has gotten away from him and now the second and third place trucks have gone by. That's Resendez in the right, number seven. Joe Rutman, the LCI truck, number 80. And Butch Miller in the white, number 20. There's the leader, the green, Quaker State truck of Sprague. Given that Mr. Chess Brown is a Chevrolet dealer in Denver, I probably have to put Corelli back in a Chevrolet. The story is Bickle as he struggles here. And Butch Miller, who's up and down weekend, is on an up right now. He's heading for the front. Let's get more on that from Bill Weber. But Dave, the crew's really happy with how the truck's running. I said, is it loose? No, it's a tight no. They say they're really content, and I think that's because this race will be decided at lap 200. And tires down the stretch, a critical factor. Rich is saving his now, so he's got him later. Pickle going in front of Hornaday, and now Jimmy Hensley is there in the 43. Defending the first champion with the model of consistency in 1996. The 97 campaign is off to a very rocky start. And by the way, we said John Monson is now the crew chief on the 16, the Napa Chevrolet. That is, in fact, the truth. But Doug Williams is still there. It's not like that Doug was fired. He has just decided to stay home so many can. Oh, they're free of breath. I know that is. Yeah, and uh, Hensley knew that quicker than anybody else had backed off. And Hornaday said, I'm not going to give up another position to this kid, Irwin. And so he darts in front of the number 98. himself in the, in the range of hope, I guess, of getting that lap back, although right now the prospects of doing that are looking pretty frustrated. Lead three, march up the front straight away. And look at Resendez. Dave Resendez, that wide number seven, is coming. This is the other side, of course, of the Tammy Joe Kirk story. If you just joined us, the first woman driver in the history of the series had bad luck early, clobbered the wall. But now her teammate, Resendiz, is inside the top three and working on Joe Rutman. We'll take a break and come back to more of this Chevy Ford battle.